Routine traffic stops, hey, they happen all the time. Headlights might not be working, some erratic driving. Well, what can the police do? What can't they do in a routine traffic stop? What well, takes us to this week's case? Falls Real Guys, they're in Nebraska. A fellow by the name of Dennis Rodriguez was driving with his friend Scott Pullman. And they were driving down the road when they moved to the shoulder of the road, came back onto the highway somewhat erratically. Police officer who saw this said, oh, I think something's happening here. And officer struggled, stopped the vehicle. He asked the driver of the vehicle to get out of the vehicle. He asked to search the vehicle. The driver said, no, you can't search the vehicle. Well, the officer thought there was something suspicious. And he writes out a citation. The citation was just basically a warning citing him, the driver, for erratic driving. But as this was all taking place, pretty soon a second vehicle shows up. So now we have two police officers there and also a dog shows up. Officer's dog by the name of Floyd. And Floyd goes to the vehicle, does a walk about it, and finds that there's methamphetamine in the vehicle. Guys are arrested for possession of methamphetamine. When the case was going forward, the guys, through their attorneys, argued, wait a second, the methamphetamine shouldn't come as an evidence because that was an unlawful search. Why was it unlawful? Because the purpose of the traffic stop was completed. A warning citation had been issued. Once that's done, there was no reason for that dog to be out there walking about the car. On the other side, the prosecutor said, no, this is all incident to a normal traffic citation, a normal traffic stop because here we had somebody who was driving erratically and yes it took some time to write that citation but in the interim to have the dog do a quick walk around of the vehicle was fine. Case went forward, went forward all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court, all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. There the court heard arguments on both sides, on both sides, and came away saying you, Mr. Defendant, are right. You are right because once that citation was written, the police were over and done with, and there was no reason to have that dog walk around the vehicle. As such, the methamphetamine, which was discovered, is suppressed. It doesn't come into evidence because it was found and as a result of an unlawful search. So, what do we learn from this case? What do we learn from this case? We learned something from this case that we've known for a long time, but once again is shown to us that under the Fourth Amendment, we in the United States are free from unlawful searches. Government, whether it's a police officer or anyone else on behalf of government, cannot enter your home, your office, your vehicle, any other place where you have an expectation of privacy without first obtaining authorization from a court, a search warrant. And when it doesn't happen, well, then the evidence that is found is suppressed. It doesn't come in because it's illawfully obtained. Important Fourth Amendment protection that we all many times take for granted, but also, as we can see, is worked out on a case-by-case -case basis. Well, we bring you this case as we bring you cases every week so you understand how the law works. I'm David Allen.